I have a fan going in the background. I hope it doesn't bother anything, but it's hot outside. As you can see the light fixture moving. Uh, today's story is going to be about uh, going to an open play at a location that I haven't been to for a while. It's roughly about an hour 47 minutes away. That's what Google Maps says. And this has this location has had three owners. The original owner, which he didn't really do much on the field, sort of everything was falling apart, didn't cut the grass, you know, didn't care about the field that much. I went up there quite a bit during his time. The only good thing I will say about him is he had some great events, and I won a Glock in a Roni kit, which I since have sold. But that was the highlight of that. Most of the time, um, the fields were overgrown and stuff was falling apart. The second owner uh, did a little bit more maintenance on the field, had better staging area uh, set up, uh, cleared the area for the spawn points, cut the grass, but he had a very strict policy about he didn't like sniper rifles um, till we convinced him that, you know, it was good. Now, this is a field that is uh, using, uh, is at 1.49 joules or 2.3 joules for sniper rifles, which is 400 with two O's, 500 with two O's. He didn't like sniper rifles. We finally convinced him to be able to use it. We went up there. I had a lot of fun with my sniper rifle. I took my 30 caliber up there, took my pistols up there. I was using everything up there. It's just right before COVID, you know, no one wanted to go up there and the field sort of like just went to hell and that was it. Long comes the third owner. He's cutting the grass. He has shrunk down the field to just spawn points inside, a line running down the one side of the woods. He's not using the rest of the field here. He's not using the rest of the fields that are over on the side. He's just using that little spot. Um, so that's where he stands on that. Uh, that That's as much as he's done on field maintenance. Hasn't done any repairs on the buildings or anything like that. He didn't mark off one, one spool and a bee's nest in that he didn't fix. But he has trimmed the brush. He has cut the grass. He has, like, taken maintenance on the physical field itself but not the structures and buildings and cover that he had. And this will be a story about the first time that I've been up to this field with the new owner. Like I said, it's an hour and 47 minutes, and that's taking the interstate. If I take uh, the back way, it's an extra 10 minutes. It's 57 minutes. But I went on a Saturday during Labor Day weekend, and it was busy as hell traffic-wise going up the interstate. So it actually took me close to two hours to get to the field. That I didn't care. I was going up anyway. So I get there, and the game is supposed to start, or the game is listed as 10 to 4, six hours of gameplay. I get there at 25 to 9. I figure I'm going to have to rush through, get stuff in, and pay and chrono and everything, and get out on the field. Well, I get there, and the guy has a car with a tag along which he's working out of with a tent over it. So I'm like, okay. There's quite a few people there, but the one guy I know, his name is Rod, and uh, he said, yeah, he, he was going to help the guy today. I found out later, doing chrono. So he said, oh yeah, you go, you pay there. So I went up there, and I happened to have two tens. The guy was taking credit cards. You know, he did have the swiper on his on his phone. But I had two tens. I gave him the two tens. It was 20 bucks for the day. And he hands me a, a green wrist strap. So then I'm finagling it, trying to get it on my wrist. And I got it on the hair and ripped the hair off my arm. And I'm like, it was a little bit nasty. Anyway, I go back and I bring up my sniper rifle. My sniper rifle shoots 2.1 joules. Okay, measured on, on three or four different fields. I go up and I'm talking to the guy, Rod, that's going to do the chrono. I said, well, what's the chrono rating here? He says, oh, 1.49 joules. He said, 1.5 joules, he said, which is 149 for 400 or 200. But anyway, I said, what's a sniper? He said, oh, I don't know. Ask, ask, ask the owner. So I go up there and I said, hey, what's your uh, FPS limits joule rating today or on the field? you know?" And he says, oh, uh, 1.5 joules. 
I said, I have a sniper rifle. He said, oh, 1.8 joules. And I'm like, okay. So I walk back, and I'm like, well, can't use the one sniper rifle. So I take it right back to the car. I go get my scout, Aerie Scout sniper rifle, Spiker 2. That's only shooting 1.39 joules. So I get that out, and I go back. And, you know, this is already 10 o'clock has come and gone. People are still coming in. It's a little after 10, and he starts the safety briefing. Now, I had gone to the bathroom. He had a job Johnny there, and I come out of the job Johnny, and he's doing the safety briefing, and I'm like, oh, geez, I'm missing it. Now, he has a compressor running on a generator, so you got the generator and the compressor running, and it's really loud, and he's talking so faint. So I go back to where I was sitting, and I'm trying to listen to him, and I said, speak up, and he finally got a little bit louder. General stuff like, don't be a dick, call your hits, things like that. He didn't mention a five-foot bang-bang roll. Okay. Then he starts talking about the tags, and I'm like, okay, that's great. We're going to be tagged to guns today. That's awesome. Blue tag is you're under the 1.5 joule rating and you're only shooting semi and i'm like okay then he says oh if you got a yellow tag he says you're under the 1.5 joule rating and you're shooting full auto he said binary triggers are allowed and i'm like he said binary triggers will be considered full auto so he said if you got one he said that's you're considered full auto so then i'm like okay and he said, if you have a red tag, he said, that's for people that are under the 1.8, that are over the 1.5 joule rating and under the 1.8. And I said, uh, I said, sniper rifles, even if they're under the, I said, under the, uh, like, 1.5 joule rating, he said, no, that would be a blue tag. Okay. So I go in, and they finally, you know, it's like, it's already 10.30. Or no, it was actually 25 to 11. And they're going to start chronoing now. And I'm like, you know, there's a shitload of us there to chrono. And there's one guy chronoing, my friend Rod, Rob. So Rob starts chronoing. I'm in line. I get up there, 139, 139, 139. Okay. The problem is he's adjusting the chrono for whatever the people are saying their BB weight is. Instead of having like a mag or a speed loader with BBs in it and say, okay, you know, and have the chrono set at three O's or three twos and say, okay, fire through and we'll see what your FPS is your, and your joules. He's setting it each time. One guy shoot with two fives, another guy shoot with two eights, one guy shoot with three sixes. I'm shooting with three twos. He's all up and down. He keeps changing that chrono. I'm like, bit of a pain in the ass that, you know, and it's taking him a long time. So I go over and I fire, I'm firing some shots off for distance inside the field. Of course, I have a mask on and all that. And I'm firing and I'm getting out there pretty good. And the guy is shooting next to me and he's burp, 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 burp. And I'm like, wow, that shit's pretty fast. He said, oh, yeah. He said, I got it all tuned up today. And I'm like, and I see he's got a yellow tag on. I'm like, okay. I go back and Rob grabs me and he said, Don, go ask the owner to come in here. I got a question about a guy. Okay. So I go over and ask the owner. I said, Rob wants to talk to you over here about it. one of the guys he's chronoing. And I I don't know why, but I went back with him, and I had to listen to this conversation. Here it's a kid that had come there. He had one gun, and this is the gun he was using. It was shooting 1.9 joules. 1.93 to be exact. Rob says, what do you want to do with this guy? He says, he's over the limit. And he wants to shoot today. He wants. To, he doesn't have another gun. He, he he don't have no money to rent. So the owner says, ah, "Put a red tag on him," and he said, "Put an or a, a yellow tag on him because he wants to shoot." And, he, and Rob said, "Well, he wants to shoot full auto with this." And he said, "Well, put a red tag and put a yellow tag on him." And he said, uh, "He said to the kids, he said, you got a hundred foot engagement distance.'" He said, "When you shoot at people, he said you can't shoot them point blank." And I'm like, "He's over the." The chrono limit. He, I'm like, anyway, we're going on and on and on and on. It's taking forever for these guys to get ready. Then eventually he says, 
we're going to arm band. So he says, he said, if you have a group that you want to stay together, let me know and we'll band you together. And I'm like, okay. So I'm there with Rob and he's, he's, he's going to have a blue arm band. So I said, well, I got a blue one with you. But his three buddies that are with him got red arm bands because they want to shoot him. So I'm like, okay. So they got them all together and, I, and they come up and they say, oh, we're over. He said, we have too many people on the blue team. He said, we need three people to go to, or he said, we have two. He started out, he said, we have too many people on the red team. We need three or four guys to go over to the blue team and even it up. Okay, these group of guys that were there, there's three guys, they all came together, they go blue tag. So he says, okay, we're pretty much even. He says, we're one over on the, on the red. Well, my buddy had come that was on, that's on my team, the Patriots, and he had come there. And he goes up to shoot with his, his rifle that he brought, and he didn't bring anything else, which, okay, didn't make chrono. It's way over it's shooting like he's shooting like 2.1 joules like I was for my sniper rifle. It's a the Novridge sniper rifle. So he's trying different gases and it's, it's just not working for him. He's having a hell of a time. So he he gets disgusted and he says that's it. I'm I, I, he said I don't have anything else. I said hey I I, I can let you. Have. No no I'm disgusted. I want it. that's it. I'm going home. He's there for a half hour, so he paid his money. I said, did you get your money back? He said, I, I'm disgusted. I'm going home. So I'm like, wow. So it's like 10 after 11 now. Big announcement. We're getting ready to go out in about five minutes. That was 10 after 11. So I put my mask on, this and that, and I'm standing there ready to go out. And I go out through into the where the field where you're going to go. And I want to get the game type. And he's waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. There's still a shitload of people in staging. And he announces, okay, here we're going to go out now. And he says, we're going to do a a, a, a a flag game. I said, okay. He said, flag in the center. Got to put When you put your color flag up, he said, that you're, you're, you're controlling. So I guess it's like a domination they're doing. And he said, blue's going to go to the right, red's going to go to the left. He said, we're going to start in about five minutes. And I'm like, again, we're going to start in about five minutes? So I'm waiting there. And he finally gets going, and he goes out in the field. He's got the ref uniform on and this and that. And I look. It's 11.35. I said, okay, first game. We go out. We split. There's no, no refs by us or anything, and they go over there. And right away, I see three guys with shooting glasses on, not full seal. You can see definite gaps on the sides of their glasses. One guy goes like this, takes them off, rubs his eyes, puts them back on. I'm like, and the people are standing there with guns like this, and the one kid went to muzzle sweep me, and I went like this, and I pushed the gun down, I said, and I said, finger off the trigger when you're pointing at somebody else. I said in staging. And he looked at me like, no comprehension. So I'm like, I stood over off to the side. All these guys are standing there with their booger hooks on the finger, on the trigger, pointing their guns at each other's faces. I said, ooh, I, I, yeah, I don't want to be around with that. So they yell. They finally start. Blue runs like crazy. We got a lot of young guys on our team. They run like crazy. I walk slowly up. I don't know how long they're going to have the game. So they start shooting in this and that. We have a good time. Bottom line is Blue kept the flag for the longest amount of time. They were they're they're timing how long you have it up. It's not who has it up the at the end of the game. It's who has it up most during the game. So they actually add up the time. Blue had it up, red had it up once, blue had it up again, red had it up for a little bit, and blue had it up again. So blue had the most time, and during that time period, I actually got six kills. I must have died like 30 times, but I did get six kills. And I, Every time I got shot, it wasn't one or two BBs, it was like 20, 30 BBs I got hit with. And I'm like, okay, full auto, I've got a semi-auto sniper rifle, i got to you know, try and work my way in. When, they, when I shoot at somebody, they see me and just blaze away at where I'm at. So I'm like, not much they can do. 
find out, you know, and the game is going and going and going and going. And I'm like, I wonder how long this game is going to be. But I said, well, hey, we're out on the field. We're having fun. That's all that matters. Find out that he decided to make it a 30-minute game. Bang, blows the whistle. It's a little after. It's about 10 after 12. That's it. We're done. We're going to go in. He said, we're going to go in for like 10 minutes and then come out. So this is about quarter after I'm in staging. Again, quarter after 12. Going to stay in for 10 minutes. I am I had forgotten about it, so I went up to him and I said, hey, to the owner, I said, you know, I didn't see anybody chrono for rate of fire. What's your rate of fire limit here? He said, oh, we don't have one. I said, really? He said, no, we don't have one here. He said, everybody's shooting pretty decent. He said, I might make it like uh, maybe 25, 30, uh, he said eventually. He said, but for right now, there's no rate of fire limit. Okay, now I know why everybody likes it up there. They just blaze away whatever rate of fire they want. So we're sitting there and sitting there and sitting there and sitting there again. And I'm like, you know, from quarter after to 12.30, and no one's moving it, and I'm like, Rob, you know, we're going to get going here? We're going to get out? Do something again? He said, yeah, pretty soon. Well, he's selling stuff, and he's doing stuff, and he's bullshitting and going on and on. Finally, this other guy, I guess, is a ref, and he said, okay, we're going to go out. We're going to go out now. 25 to 1. Okay, cool. Let's go. <clears throat> he said, oh, i got to get a head count. He said, I want... All the red band bar bands come over here, and all the blue arm bands come over here. He and he said, "Oh, well, the sides are lopsided. We need three blue arm bands to go on the red side." And I'm like, three, three, like, I'm like, okay. So three guys that were that went from red to blue, what now went back to red. Same three guys. So we're going out in the field, and I'm just. Like I'm like, okay, I count our guys. We get back over to spawn, and the ref actually walks over, and he says, where's the rest of your team? There's about six of us. I said, I don't know. I said, I seen a shitload of them red guys go over there. I said, we got six guys. He said, I said, there are a lot of guys sitting out. So he, he said, hang on a bit. He walks back over, and I can hear him hollering and say, hey, all right, and nobody coming out, and you know, this and that, and pretty soon two or three more trickle over, and this and that. And by the time we're done, we had 11 guys there. And I know there was like 18 on the other side. So they start the game, finally. Finally start the game. I look at the time. It's seven minutes of, a, of one. I'm like, really? Seven minutes of one. So I put my phone in my pocket. And they blow the whistle. And we go out. And I mean... It was a friggin', and now we're on the opposite side. I come out of spawn. I get shot immediately. I'm like, I'm just barely coming out of spawn. I'm like, go back. I try and go another way. Go out, and I go up on a hill. Blah, 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 I just blazed away. I'm getting shot. Here they all ran up, like, really tight to the field, and they're just shooting full auto at all the entrances. Not that they're getting anybody. And then their guy went up, put up the flag. They got the red flag up. I go up again. I try to sneak up very slowly. I see a guy. I just barely get out of the brush. And blah, 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 I'm getting hit with like 30, 40 BBs. I'm only there 10 minutes. And I'm disgusted already. I'm just being outshot. And the, the, some of these guys shooting are shooting way hotter than 25 rounds a second. And all I'm hearing is... Bzz, 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 and, the, the the last straw was I walked out of spawn 20 feet, and there is a guy shooting at our guys coming right out of our spawn. I said to him, you know, this is our spawn. He said, oh, that don't matter. Took out my dead rag, put it on my head. I'm walking out. I'm yelling, dead man coming out, getting shot. I'm walking across the field with a dead rag, holding it like this. Yelling, dead man coming out, I'm getting shot. I walk over to the, almost getting out, out through the fence, and I'm getting shot all the time. With a red rag on my head. I go out, get into staging. 
Picked up my stuff. Walked over to the car. It was about 10 after 1 then. Put it in the back. Didn't even put it in the bags or nothing. Just threw everything in the back. Took off my gear. Put it on there. I was going to change my shoes and all this other. My shirt and all that other stuff. And I'm like, that's it. I'm done. One guy said, oh, you're leaving now. I said, I'm getting out shot. I said, I have a sniper rifle. I said, versus all these guys shooting full auto. He said, oh, yeah. He said, you really need to have a, a, a something that shoots full auto up here. And I'm like, no, you don't. Get in the car. Down the road I went. Again, I hit bumper to bumper traffic coming back home. It was a good two hours. And I said, you know, I'm going to stop somewhere when I'm going home. At least get something good to eat, which I did. I stopped at a decent place, had something to eat, and I got home. And I'm like, I was just so disgusted. I played, I didn't even play the full second game. It was supposed to be a half hour, I found out. I didn't even play the whole second game. I was there like maybe 15 minutes into that game. So there I played 45 minutes from when I arrived there at like 9.35 till I left the quarter after one. I'm like, I guess I didn't bring the right weapon, but the field was not conducive to the rules. They weren't, was not conducive to a, a sniper air, like playing on that field. Everybody had an AAG of some kind. Or, the, you know, the one guy was using a pistol on full auto, and a man, he was just blazing away. And I said, you know, if you came there with an AEG and shot full auto or an LMG or something like, excuse me, like that, you would have been happy. You would have had a, fall, a, a ball. But some of these guns were shooting really fast. And the field was small. And there was only the two staging areas, like a small square. There was the castle, like a fort on the side, and the spot where they put the flag up and down in the middle of the field in a couple of spools or whatever. That's it. So you always fought switching sides from one side to the other. Now, they said that when they attacked the castle, they split the attackers in the two spawns. And you're supposed to spawn from either spawn when you die and attack the castle. I never got to that because it was already, you know, after one. The way they were doing it, you'd get maybe four games in during the day. That's four half-hour games, which is like two hours of gameplay in six hours. So, will I go back there? Probably not. Uh, I tried to, like, touch base with the owner about the rules and stuff like that. And he said, oh, we're all just learning here. And I'm like, well, you're learning the wrong lesson. If you start off restrictive, you can loosen up. But if you start off, like, really loose and letting everybody do what they want, down the road when you say, oh, we're not going to do this, this, and this, it's going to be hard to do. It's going to be hard to enforce. So, cautionary tale, I'm sure people have seen. Now, I've gone to other places first time. I've gone to brand new places I've never played before, and I had a blast. You know, I've gone to places before that I've gone to for years. And I you can have a good day and a bad day. But I always like to figure, I'm going to go there and have a good time no matter what happens. Sometimes you don't, though. So, this has just been a little cautionary tale of my experience at a local place. Uh, hopefully, you guys have a little bit better luck than I did. Uh, at my age... I don't really like to travel more than two hours to a place and then only spend like two hours there playing. So I like to get a little bit more gameplay into that. So as always, I hope you enjoyed the story and you guys have a good day. And it's raining here, so I can't go outside, but you all have a good one. Mr. McGee, don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry.